Hi, I'm Carl Kircher. You see me in such fine quality, epic chemistry educational videos such as... Product placement and you. And... <sighs> Lemonade before a video shoot is an awesome thing. Okay. Chapter 7, we're going to do a little bit of a review. This is not going to be shown in class. This is going to be something you guys got to do on your own. I'm going to give you guys these formulas here, and I'm going to spend a little time on these problems here. Okay? Cue in some little messages. All right. So let's look at the first one here. Hand radio operators often broadcast on the 14-meter band. The frequency of this electromagnetic radiation is blank megahertz. Well, the first thing you may notice is mega meaning million. So you know it's going to be a big number. So you have to go look through here and you'd say, okay, I have no idea where we're going with this. Well, yeah, you do because you have a formula here. It's, it is cut off. Uh, it is that funny looking V that is frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. Now, that being said, guys, so we have here our wavelength, and we have our speed of light, 3 times 10 uh, to the 8 meters per second. So that's just the question of dividing it out. So 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 14 equals, okay? And it's going to be one of these. It's going to be one of these uh, answers here. All right, and I'll let you guys figure that out. Now remember, if you sit there and say, wait a minute, it doesn't come out to any one of those numbers. It comes out to something a lot larger. Okay, here's the mega, which is, that's kind of telling you, hey, there's something going on here. There's a lot bigger thing. Okay, I do want to move on to the next one with you guys. Okay, here it is, as we move down here. Now, of the following transitions in the Bohr hydrogen atom, okay, blank, the blank transition results in the emission of the lowest energy photon. So, if we were looking, this is where you start, this is where you finish. So from 6 to 1, level 6 to level 1, level 1 to level 6, level 3 to level 6, level 6 to level 3, level 1 to level 4. Now, here's the thing. If you're talking about electrons giving off energy, do electrons climb levels in order to get to end, to get give off energy? If you don't know the answer to that, you should not be in AP chemistry. You need to go back, okay? The answer has to do with the electrons have to come down energy levels in order to give off the energy. So guess what? What does that eliminate? Well, it eliminates B, it's going to eliminate C, and it's going to eliminate E. Oh, snap! But wait a minute. How can I go figure this out? Am I supposed to come up with the actual energy answer? No. Do I have to go and use Bohr's formula to figure this part out? Yes, but not the whole thing. You don't have to calculate the actual energy amount. You don't. Check this out. They gave you the droppings of the levels from 6 to 1 and 6 to 3. Now, if you look here at the energy level for Bohr, the initial is from 6, okay? So 6 squared, here it would be 1 squared, so it would be 1 minus 1 divided by, and then here it would be 6, a drop of 6 from the initial and a 3. Okay, now here's something to think about. Where are you getting more energy from if you're dropping way more levels as an electron or when you're dropping fewer levels as an electron without figuring out the, without necessarily plugging this in. This is where you have to know your reasoning because you went down from five to two choices. So our answer actually would be D. That would be because it is the low, it is the not the lowest drop, it is the lowest energy in the process. It should not be, okay? All right, but you can still plug that in, but that should be the case. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Now, when the electron in a hydrogen atom goes from level 6 to level 2, light with a wavelength of blank nanometers is emitted. 
Okay, this is going to have to be a two-part problem. The first part, guys, would have to be you need to figure out how much energy. It says an electron, so you only got to deal with one electron. Okay, great. So where do we get that information? We get that information right up here. The energy in the photon is equal to Planck's constant times our frequency. Okay, what does that look like? What did they give us? They gave us the drop here from 6 to 2. Okay, so wait. We're going to need two parts. Well, this thing here has a connection with this formula here because you're going from 6 to 2. Okay, so you're going to plug in the 6 and square that. You're going to plug in the 2 and square that. So 1 fourth, take away 136, multiply by 2.17 times 10 to the negative 18th. Okay, that the, it's possible they could ask you that. But that's how you would go and actually solve the problem. Okay, so that would be a two-part. Now, let's take a look at this one here. Which one of the following configurations depicts an excited carbon atom? Well, the first thing you have to ask is, wait, how many electrons would you have in a regular carbon atom? Well, if you go look on the periodic chart, carbon has an atomic number of six, six protons, therefore six electrons. Okay, so let's look and see here. Now, it should be 1s to the 2, 2s to 2p3, okay, it's just not, it's not in the superscript position. So let's add them up to see what's going to work for an excited carbon atom. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. This is not even a choice. It doesn't have the amount. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, okay, this is a possibility. Uh, 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, no. Uh, 2 plus 2 plus 1, that's another 5. No, that's not a choice either. You notice how I'm eliminating the choices. Now here, we got 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, and 3s1. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Aha! Uh -huh. So now we've got it down to these two possibilities. Again, I looked at the number of electrons in the electron configuration. That's what it is. So when we look here, so what's the standard order? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? But we only have six electrons, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This is the ground state for carbon as an atom. It's a ground state, so guess what? That's out, that's our answer. Now check this out. How do I know it's an excited carbon atom? Look where it says 2p1, and then all of a sudden now, here it is at 3s1. So you had a carbon that jumped off from level 2, sublevel p, into 3s. That is an excited carbon atom, an excited electron. Woo! It absorbed energy like so many of my students this past week with the sugar. Oh my gosh, the cases of sugar-induced psychosis. Oh, my Lady Gaga. Unbelievable. Okay, let's move on. So, if I were looking here, uh, consider the following electron configurations to answer the questions that follow. So here, when we look at these electron configurations, notice that you have the noble gas core. This is an abbreviation. Instead of sitting out there like 1s2 and 2s2 and 2p6, they give us the noble gas that says, oh, hey, it's got the same electron configuration as krypton, yo. So instead of writing that all out, we just sit there, put the brackets, put in krypton. That's what they mean by an abbreviated electron configuration. Now, take a look at that 5s1. Okay, that's fine. And then we've got these and these and these and these. All right, so let's take a look. It says the electron configuration of the atom that is expected to have the lowest first ionization energy is. Okay, first things first. 
What is the ionization energy? You should know that automatically. How much energy does it take to pull an electron out from an atom to make it a, a cation? You know. So that's the first ionization energy. The second ionization energy is pulling the second, and so on and so forth. So we're looking at pulling one electron out. Okay. Well, let's see. For ionization energy, for the first one, how easy would it be? It probably, if you're looking at how easy is it going to be, then you have to start looking at, all right, what is in the uppermost levels here? So how many electrons do I here have here at this highest level? I've got seven. I have here 5s1, so I've got a one. I have here at the highest level four and two, because the two here for 4s2 and 4p4, that gives me six. And then here, 3s2 and 3p6, that gives me eight. And then here, I've got one. Okay, so we're talking about pulling out one electron. So, if we go with the octet rule, the rule of Ocho, is it going to be easy to pull electrons out of these guys? No, not really. Okay, so it's reasonable to assume we're not doing those. So what about these left over? So now we're down to two possible choices. Okay, now the question comes down to is, all right, which one is going to be the one that you're going to have the lowest? How easy is it going to be? So now you have to start looking. Well, what's the difference between this one and this one? The answer is the size of the atom. How would I know the size of the atom? Well, for one thing, I could look at the KR and the AR. I know that they're on two separate places on the map here. They're both in group 18. The AR is smaller than the KR. So argon is actually smaller than the KR. Now, if I did not know that, notice where it says 4S1 and 5S1. That means the 5S1 is on a higher level, okay? However, it is also the furthest away from the nucleus, further away than the 4S1. And that's, when you can get down to two choices, this is good. So guys, guess what? This is the correct answer. Why? Because the further the electron is away from the nucleus, the easier it is to rip it out and make that atom an ion. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay, guys. So... At this point, I've shown you a few more tricks here, um, and uh, this will help you guys out for you know your upcoming quiz. And all right, this is Carl Kircher signing off. Subliminals. Merry Christmas. Bum, bum.